Number two, in the bathroom, which specialty electrical outlet would likely be appropriate? So we have four possible answers, uh, waterproof, VAV, GFCI, and arc fault. Um, well, first thing we can do is we can cross off uh, GF, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, VAV, because uh, that's actually a uh, HVAC system, not an electrical system. Um, and then the question becomes, all right, well, what about waterproof and GFCI and arc fault? Um, well, I'm going to talk about arc fault for a second. Arc fault is sort of an interesting specialty outlet. Uh, many of you have probably come across it bef uh, in the last few years. Uh, the arc faults have existed for a long time, but they didn't really become requirements until relatively recently. And there's a bit of a backlash from uh, electrical uh, engineers and various other folks about whether they're truly helpful uh, in the process or not. But the concept of an arc fault is that it deals with static electricity. And the trouble with static electricity is you have static electricity uh, buildup near uh, an outlet, you can get what's referred to as an arc, right? So if you imagine uh, Frankenstein, you know, where you've got the two poles on either side of his head and there's that sort of a little uh, lightning bolt that goes between them, that's an arc, right? That's an electrical arc. Uh, and so if you get a static buildup and then uh, there's an outlet there, uh, you can get that electrical arc, that little lightning bolt that goes between them. And if there happens to be linens nearby or curtains or something like that, it's a big fire hazard. Uh, and so uh, there's been, uh, in recent years, uh, most of the codes have picked up having arc faults in bedrooms and uh, potentially in living rooms, places where people might be sleeping is essentially the way that's always been explained to me. I don't know if that's the technical response, but that's the way it was always explained to me. Uh, and so the arc faults have, have do a very serious job, uh, but uh, like I said, there's been sort of a pushback as about whether they're actually effective uh, in saving any lives and or saving fires. Uh, so it's a bit of an up in the air uh, thing. It's hard to know how it would show up on the exam, but it is a real and uh, potentially quite important uh, electrical device uh, that you should know about. But that's not the issue in a bathroom. I suppose it could be an issue in a bathroom, just like it could be an issue anywhere. But much more likely, a bathroom issue is going to be about water. So that leaves us with waterproof and GFCI. Uh, GFCI is ground fault circuit interrupt. You might see it referred to as GFI, ground fault interrupt. Uh, the difference between the ground fault interrupt and the ground fault circuit interrupt is that uh, the GFI is just located in that outlet, uh, and so it's just there in that one box. The circuit interrupt means the entire circuit that that's on is on uh, the ground fault circuit interrupt. Uh, a GFCI is set up so that uh, when, uh, let's say you have a hair dryer and you're plugged it in uh, across on one side of the sink, but then you're using it on the other side and the cord goes into the water and there's a little break in the cord. Uh, and uh, suddenly electricity can find its way out of the wire and into that water. And uh, in the meantime, somebody is brushing their teeth and using the water and touching the water. Uh, and that would be a, a huge disaster because now the electricity has multiple places to go. It's not just following the path of the wire, it can go anywhere. And so a huge surge of electricity, because it can go anywhere, will go out into that water. Well, the GFCI can feel that. It understands that there's a, a weird and uh, by there's no reason why there would be this huge sudden surge of power and it cuts the power off before any damage can happen. A waterproof outlet is in fact a GFCI or GFI outlet. Uh, so GFCI is the category that says uh, this is the device type. Uh, waterproof is it's not only that but no water like it can live outside and in a very very wet situation. Uh, and it has covers and things like that. So the answer here is actually the GFCI. Uh, the waterproof is a, a potentially good answer. It's just that most people, very, very rarely would you actually put a, a actually truly waterproof outlet uh, in a bathroom because it's just, it gets wet, it just doesn't get that wet. You'd use a waterproof 
uh, in a situation where it's going to get rained on or where it's right next to a pool and water is splashing up onto it or something like that. So the waterproof is much more expensive and much uh, a sort of heavier duty. Uh, the GFCI is sort of everyday water locations. So the places that you would see that are going to be bathrooms, uh, it's going to be the kitchens, uh, it's going to be laundry rooms, uh, all of those. Uh, basement spaces, just because you might get just enough water in those basement spaces and moisture. Uh, so any place you think there's going to be water, but not uh, water literally co coming at the actual outlet all the time. It's more that the cords might be in places where that are going to get wet. So this is one of those ones you should absolutely know. Make sure you feel very comfortable with GFIs and GFCIs.